Hi, everyone. I'm Matt Haynes. And I'm Trenton Bennett. And we are narrators, typically uh, taking this opportunity uh, during our split screen time to uh, talk about the industry and art of narration. And this is in that line, but this is very special because this is um, part of my accent and voice studies. And um, I was uh, talking with Trenton after we recorded our last video, and he was talking about uh, Kentucky and uh, his uh, feedback on my work. And I thought, my goodness, this is a great opportunity to uh, to make a new video, uh, Kentucky 3. So uh, Trenton, you, you had been talking to me about uh, Eastern and Western Kentucky. So uh, can you just, uh, for, for all the fans out there, just uh, talk about uh, your, your observations? Sure. First off, my child was born in Kentucky. I lived there over 30 years and I lived in different parts of the state. So I lived in Bowling Green and Frankfurt and Lexington and Louisville, not Louisville. Mm, right. And just, you know, Frankfurt's kind of close to Versailles. Oh, I mean, Versailles. Uh -huh. So I've also been to parts of Eastern Kentucky. Kentucky is beautiful. I miss it. It was lovely to drive through the countryside every single week. And I traveled all over the state from time to time over the years. So I listened to Kentucky one and I played it with my family and we all agreed this is a really good, this is a really good angle on the Kentucky accent, but it felt like a lot of the intonations that were mentioned in Kentucky one were stronger in Western Kentucky than in Eastern Kentucky. Mm. And then as you get into Kentucky two, you start to get into some of the Eastern Kentucky. And the big difference here is mostly that as you go further east and you get closer to West Virginia, you get more into the hills and you get more of isolated communities where there's a little bit of an accent drift that's not the same as the areas in central Kentucky, for example, that are closer to Lexington and Louisville. Yeah. So some of the more, uh, at, the, at the risk of using the word cliche, mm -hmm. some of the more of the ideas of the Southern accent are more prominent in Eastern Kentucky mm -hmm. than in Western, but they both have the same elements you've drawn out. So the principle of it being, you know, sort of up here rather than down here, um, that, that, that applies still, correct? I lived in uh, Alverton, which was kind of the countryside outside of Bowling Green. And to give everybody a frame of reference, it's right across the Tennessee border. Okay. It is about an hour or so north of Nashville. It's where they make Corvettes. But the point is, it's just over the, the central Kentucky hump into western Kentucky. And you can stretch all the way out to Paducah, which is a few hours drive from that. And that accent's going to be a little bit more like opened up, like you're saying. Okay. So what you were saying in Kentucky one, that sounded like the mailman in the, in the Alberton post office when I'd stop by there. And yeah. All right. Um, well, let's see here. So we've got uh, the lyrics to bridge over troubled water, where this is the song that uh, that's going to uh, make the final video. Um, so, when you're weary, feeling small, when tears are in your eyes, I'll dry them all. So, my first go at it would be, when you're weary, feeling small, when tears are in your eyes, I'll dry them all. Hold on, Wait. there's a little more, you got a little more non-rhotic Texan in there. Okay. You can, you can open it up a little bit, and you can do that, but it's going to be all, and it's not going to be all. Slight difference there. Slight difference. To, to say it one more time for, for our fans. It's going to be more like owl. You're going to owl. see the shape of my lips, owl. Yeah. And less like owl, owl, which is more of the wide open, non rhotic Texan. Uh, for the record, folks, my whole family are Texan. I was born in Texas. And so, yeah, that's that's my basis of comparison there. You get non rhotic, which some of y'all might find more familiar with Georgia, where it's more non rhotic. But you go into Texas and it's a little more like the cowboy movies. And if and you I go were a little to... bit more into Kentucky and it's more like the Beverly Hillbillies. Yes. Yes. Um, uh, so if I were to if I were to go into the hills with this, um, mm -hmm. when you're weary, feeling small, when tears are in your eyes, I'll dry them all. Does that sound about right? When you're weary, feeling small and tears are in your eyes. What was that last line? I'll dry them all. I'll dry them all. Dry them all. Yes, this is, this is okay. Uh, so what I'm also hearing is um, the uh, the the E to I phenomenon. So when you're weary, rather than weary, um, when you're weary, 
feeling mm-hmm. small. When tears are in your eyes, I'll dry them all. Yep. Okay. And what I'm also noticing, um, and this is this is isn't it strange um the way the way accents shift. Um, I'm hearing a uh, a uh, lisp of S to SH. Does that is that pretty common up in the hills of East Kentucky? How do you mean by the lisp? Can so, you be more specific? So yeah, yeah, sure. Um, when tears are in your eyes, I'm hearing tears are in your eyes. Tears are yes, eyes. Yeah, it's a little bit less prominent at the end of a word than it because would be when you're transitioning. Z, it's the from Z a consonant sound to a rather vowel. than it. Yeah, so the S S becomes S H, but the S pronounced as a Z doesn't so much. Tears are in your eyes. Tears are in your eyes. Mm-hmm. Okay. Um, so, um, so what I'm hearing is that, like, you know, you get sort of a, a more general Midwest sound, um, uh, which is, uh, you know, just the uh, more the hard R's, and um, it sounds closer to general American. Um, but in East, you get the, the more dynamic up, down, it's really, it's, it's, it's in a smaller place up in the mouth. Is that, is that right? A little bit. Yeah. Cause one of the jokes sometimes folks make from Eastern Kentucky when they're talking about it with someone who's from central or West is they're like, yeah, I'm from the heels. And they'll say it like that on purpose and the deliberately heels. stretch it out and exaggerate it. The heels, you know, the heels. Right. Almost you know, making it a schwa so that it's almost like an extra syllable. Heels rather yeah, than heels. Exactly. Yeah. Um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to share my screen. I would love for you to have a go at some of these lyrics and do uh, Eastern and Western. Are you game? I'll, I'll, I'll give it a try. Yeah. All right. Here we go. Okay. Let's see. So, so when you're verse... weary, feeling small, when tears are in your eyes, I'll dry them all. I'm on your side. Oh, when times get rough and friends just can't be found. Like a bridge over troubled water, I will lay me down. Okay. So I'm hearing that the and becomes an ain, right? Mm-hmm. Friends just can't be found. Found. Um. All right. So was that, would you say that was Eastern or Western? It's a little more Western. You'd probably throw it a little bit further into the vowel sounds for Eastern. It'd be when you're, when, when you're weary, feeling small, when tears are in your eyes, I'll dry them all. I'm Uh on your side. Oh, when times get rough and friends just can't be found. Uh, Yeah. And you're also uh, deleting the, um, uh, you're deleting the uh, D and T at the end of the word. So it's found, you know, mm-hmm. not not found. Um, yeah. And uh, unless you're I, speaking very deliberately, like you're in church and you're preaching, you're not going to you're, you're going to let that fade, that D. It's not yes. going to be a hard D. What about the L at the end of the word? Do you say feeling small or do you say feeling small? Small. Small. OK. Um, small and all. And I'm also hearing that uh, with both, there is when you're rather than mm-hmm. you're. Uh, yeah. Okay, I'm so on when, your side. I'm on your side. Okay. Excellent. Um, is there, uh, are you noticing um, the it to eh switch? So when tears are in your eyes, becoming tears and your eyes? In. Tears are in. in. Tears are in your eyes. Okay. Okay. That's good to know. But uh, it's it's yeah. true. Times almost sounds a little non rhotic just because it's stretched out a little. Times, mm-hmm. times get rough. Okay, times. It sounds it. It it has that same, not really non rhotic. What I'm saying is, in the non rhotic Texas accent, times opens up in your mouth. Times, and you do a little of that in Kentucky when times get rough. Let's take the next verse, shall we? Okay. All right. So. Um... Based on what you've told me, when you're down mm-hmm. and out, when you're you're on the street, 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 no, yeah. no T at the end, street. The T is softer than that, yeah. Right. When evening falls so hard. So hard. Hard. But yeah. Hard. Okay, I'm noticing so that. So hard. Mis- so hard, almost H O R D. Yeah. Yep. I'm noticing that with Mississippi as well. I will comfort you. 
Yeah, though the the flow, I will comfort you. I I will comfort you. Okay. I will comfort you. I will comfort you. So it's a, it's a rise, even though it's a statement. I will mm -hmm. comfort you. Okay. I'll take 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 your part. Your. Your. Drop it more. That's your. right. That's right. I'll, I'll take, take your part. I'll your take your part. part. You. If you're speaking fast enough, I'll take your part, but I'll okay. take your part. So part, even though hard becomes hoard, part is still part. When evening falls, falls so hard, uh -huh. I will comfort you. I'll uh -huh. take your part. Okay. I wonder if it's because the T has a much more severe, like, cutoff, whereas hard, you know, has a, has a melodic, you know, the, the D has, is voiced. Um, o... When darkness comes and pain, pain is all around. Mm -hmm. All You're right, doing good. All right, you 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 do it. Uh, you, you do it now. When you're down and out, when you're on the street, when evening falls so hard, I will comfort you. I'll take your part. Oh, when darkness comes and pain is all around. Beautiful. Like a bridge over troubled water. I will lay, me, lay down. me down. Excellent. Okay. Um, and then uh let's do uh let's do the the last one. Okay, so sail on silver girl, sail on by. Your time has come to shine. All your all your all your dreams are on their way way there's little bits that you're doing like come and way that's that sound a little more texan to me when you're doing okay. that because and I'm that's and i i can't put my finger on it because i'm not as good at it explaining the nuances as you are but yeah well, sail on a, silver girl sail yeah. on by sail bye. on by which your is time has you know. come maybe I'm your time your time has come to shine has come to shine so it's, yeah, come to shine is a little more dentalized. Your time okay. has come to shine. Come to shine. But All your also, dreams are on their way. Why? Why? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, why? the why. It's not why. way. It's why. Almost a, why? almost W-H-Y. Why? Um, sort of halfway between way and why. Why? Yes, between yeah. way and why, yes. Yeah, and it sounds like my error is elongating those those particular vowels. So come, yeah. you know, um, come to shine. All your dreams are on their way. Um, That's the better explanation. We talked about rhotic earlier, and I mentioned that with the Texas accent, I, I referred to it as a rhotic because I thought of that as the big divide in my mind between different Southern accents. But it really is stretching the vowels is part yeah. of that. Yeah. So, yeah, you don't stretch your vowels as much in Kentucky as you do in Texas. Okay. All right. So, see how they shine. Oh, if you need, if you need a friend, I'm sailing right, right behind. Oh, if you need a friend, I'm sailing right behind. <laughs> I love it. I love it. Oh, if you need a friend, I'm sailing right, I'm sailing right behind. Shall we synthesize it? Sure. All right, go for it. Sail on, silver girl. Sail on by. Your time has come to shine. All your dreams are on their way. See how they shine. Oh, if you need a friend, I'm sailing right behind. I love the musicality of it. I love it. I love um, the people of Kentucky. I love how you can go places where you wouldn't hear any particular intonation and others where it's going to vary. Like I say, in Paducah versus in Pine Top, it's going to be different. But um, I think one of the other things I wanted to talk about is you talk about punching in which is a lot of people, if you work with accents and dialects, you know what that means to punch mm. as far as the emphasis. Yeah. And you'll find that because there are some beautiful, brilliant witticisms. And I'll give you one example, yeah. which was when I first had someone say, y'all better not mess with me. Y'all as soon as, let me, let me see, hang on. Y'all better not mess with me. You as soon as sandpaper, a wildcat's ass in a bathtub. <laughs> it's punching. There's a lot of punching. Sandpaper, a wildcat's ass in a bathtub. <laughs> it sounds almost like an auctioneer. Yeah. 
I got yeah. Um. Well, every every accent, if you're not used to it, sounds faster to you because your brain is trying to process it and it has to do so slower because it's isn't not used to it. Isn't that true? Isn't that true? Yeah. Yeah, totally. And that's that's where I get dinged on my videos quite a bit as well. They're like, we talk faster than that. It's like, except, except, ironically, some of my Southern videos are like, we talk slower than that. <laughs> so go figure. Yeah. Well, brilliant. Um, I'm so lucky to have Trenton as my accountability partner and my uh, advisor on this. Um, so I'll just repeat uh, the uh, the outroductions. I'm Matt Haynes. And I'm Trenton Bennett. And as your teachers of narration and narrators, I hope that our voices and your ears meet again real soon. Thanks, everybody. <laughs>